everybody you know that wants to go out and knock on the doors of the brothels all over the state drive 1500 miles every month do it for 10 well over 10 years now why do you do that are you out of your mind you know why would you do that i do it because i love the girls it's a difficult ministry it's a dark ministry but as dark as it is and as difficult as it is um, it's very rewarding and, and it keeps me humble 16 17 years ago they had to have a pimp or they couldn't even work there so but yeah it's high we see their brands we see their bruises we see their black eyes uh, we see all of it yeah we, we get to see it she was trafficked and uh, so her pimp put her in the, bro the brothel eventually and she's um, we celebrated her 59th birthday last that's all she's known and she's beautiful she's absolutely beautiful and uh, you know I just I just adore her and when she 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 brought us this, she asked you know the, the owner if we could go to her room she wanted to show us her room and when she took us in her room she was so proud of her room and and then what, what she was really excited about is she had her own shower well one time we went in a brothel up north and uh this one gal who always was like the first one to greet us she never came out and so i said to one of the other girls i said where is she and she says oh she says uh, uh this weird guy came in and and beat her up really, really bad, and she can't. She's she's hurt so bad she can't get out of bed. I want to talk a, a little bit about how the brothels work and the laws. The, the state tolerates them. The street the state really doesn't want a lot to do with them. Okay. There, um, it's kind of always been like this, okay? It's, it's in our culture. I mean, this is not new, right? I mean, back in the 1800s, there were brothels. I mean, you know, Miss Kitty, she was a prostitute, okay? And, um, and it was, it's just the way it's been for thousands of years. And uh, I, I hope that it slows down a little bit, but whether it does or not, I can't help that. It's, it's just, you know, it is what it is. But um, the state, has made a law, a couple of laws. One of the laws that the state has made is that if a, if a county has more than 400,000 people living in, in it, 400,000 population, then there cannot be any legal brothels in, in that county. Okay, so Lewis and Clark County is, prostitution is against the law in this county, okay? So, well, that, but then we go over to Nye County and we've got two brothels there, plus we've got uh, two more in Nye County. Uh, let's see, we've got one, two. Uh, actually, there's another one that's gonna be reopening. Dennis Hoff's gonna be reopening because of the Raiders coming to Vegas. So that will be in Nye County, too. Up until 16, 17 years ago, the legal brothels required that the girls have a pimp or they wouldn't take them. So the fact that you know the, the fact that there's girls in the legal brothels people are sometimes surprised to hear that there's uh, uh there's uh girls <laughs> in the legal brothels that have been uh, trafficked well yeah it used to be that all of them were so so now it's changed and the girls girls can just make a decision to go in and, and you know get a job in a in a brothel that they're 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 going broke they can't they can't complete pete with what's going on in the street uh, you know, they're a business, they have overhead, and um, so I just see more and more and more, I see fewer girls in the brothels all the time. 
and there are brothels that have gone down. What do we do? Well, we go in every month. We go in and we knock on the door, we ring the buzzer, some are, have the iron gauge, you have to buzz in. And we go in and we just, uh, every time we go, it's totally different. We see different girls, the girls will move around to different brothels. Sometimes we'll see them one time and speak with them one time and we'll never see them again. Um, they know who we are, they call us the church ladies. I do their weddings and I do their funerals. And the, the funerals that I've done so far have been two of them suicide. So, ew, you know, so uh, the suicide rate among the prostitutes is very high. They know that I'm traveling a long distances to come and see them, and to talk with them, and to hug them, and to celebrate their birthdays with them. You know, touch is so important. They've experienced so much touching that is so inappropriate and so damaging to them. You know, that when I hug them or when we are, one of my team members hugs them and we touch them, it's like a breath of fresh air to them. They, they get it. You know, these girls are not stupid. They get it. The consistency is extremely important. They know we're coming back, you know, and you know, you, you, to, for someone to trust you, 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 have to, um, you have to build a relationship, I mean, you know, with somebody to trust you. And especially these girls who have been very bad, most of them have been really abused all of their lives. And from the time they were small, little girls. We pray a lot. The girls always ask for, a lot of girls ask for prayer. When we come in, and we do have prayer cards. I think I brought I brought a prayer card. It's up there, and we have these prayer cards, and uh, we take their names down. We don't take them into the brothels, but we take their names, and then if they have prayer requests, we we write them down. Uh, what brothel? Their stage names, and then we hand them out to people who uh, want to pray for 40 days for this girl, and so we they, we give them a lot of prayer. A lot of people will ask me. Well, uh, do any of the girls, you know, come out? Do, do you, are you, you know? <laughs> uh, our goal in this ministry is not to get the girls out. That is not our goal. Our goal is to lead them into a relationship with Jesus. That's our goal. And, and then we depend on the Holy Spirit to get them out. Have girls come out? Absolutely. But it's a process. We're not there to cause problems. They're legal in this state. They have a right to do what they do. It's legal until those laws are changed, if they ever are. Um, it's, you, we respect the owners. We respect the clients that are in there. We respect the bartenders, the cooks, everybody that's in there. We have. We absolutely do not go in there with a chip on our shoulder of any kind. We're there to represent Jesus, and he is a God of love, and that is exactly what we do. Uh, how much do these girls make usually? <sighs> Anywhere from nothing, and they have expenses there. They're charged about $45 a day for room and board by the owner, whether they work or not to uh, a lot of money, but not a lot, not like it used to be. It used to be these girls would really make big money. They don't make big money anymore. And if they're not making big money, the, the owners aren't making big money either. So, there, it, it varies, you know. And the girl, when she comes to work, say she's booked in for two weeks. She comes in for two weeks. She's got all these expenses, airline ticket, all of it. it it's, uh, they have lots of expenses. They have to buy their own condoms, they have to buy their own clothes, they have to buy certain shoes to wear. Um, it, it's expensive. And, um, and then they might not make anything. What is the relationship with the, with the Catholics and 
in Lady Mia's inside? Like, I mean, does she go back to him after her contract is After over? her contract is up, she goes back to her pimp, yes. And he then decides to either put her back on the streets or send her back. Or, so is it more likely he's receiving money from her? From what her they do, yes, yes. Uh, her money uh, usually goes, to, most of them use Bank of America, the ones I know, and they open an account in, at Bank of America in Tim's name only, and the uh, brothel sends her check right to the checking account. Wow. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't see her check. And then her pimp gives her the money that she needs for clothes and hair and makeup and that sort of thing. And she didn't get money. If she's got a pimp, she's not making money. How do they get away with that and everything's legal? I mean, like, don't they think that they're independent contractors? How do they get away with keeping someone, like, writing a check in someone else's name? Because, the, because she okay is that she okays it. She's 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 brainwashed. She, he's got her. She's a slave. She's a sex slave. These girls are slaves. So if you guys who are wanting all this money that you think you're going to be getting from legalizing prostitution, well, that's Dennis's house argument. I don't know if you saw the. Oh yeah, I know article, it. Right? He sicked his dog on me one time. Yeah. <laughs> but that's his, that's how he's selling. His selling point is like, oh, we should add, um, you know, legal brothels to the strip and, you know, no. that's how we can stop sex trafficking. No. <laughs> that's that'll his, that's that'll his campaign. That'll just increase yeah. it. It'll just make it okay. Right. Oh. Youngest uh, participant and oldest participant. Oldest. 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 Um, I've seen women over 60 in the brothels. Because they don't have, they don't know how to do anything else and they, they don't get social security they have no way to live they have if they have to make a living somehow so this is all they know okay uh, so oh, I, over 60 I see them over 60 uh, some of the girls uh, are getting in 18 yeah in some counties it depends on the county see the state really doesn't want a lot to do with it they just really don't want a lot to do with it. They made a few rules. I think they're the ones that passed, it's in my book, all those statistics of the rules that they made, um, the state, they, they just, they don't want a lot to do with it. They, they let the counties do whatever the counties are gonna do. She says, if someone were to ask me for a picture of true unconditional love, I would tell them to look at Kay and her life. Kay exemplifies the love of God, always pursuing the hearts of those that have been neglected, lost, or forgotten. The love that she freely offers is not always freely received, but I watched her persevere with courage through rejection, still offering forgiveness, kindness, and acceptance. When nobody, not even the girls, were willing to hear the message of unconditional love, she continued to knock on doors, bring gifts, and pray. Now many are following in Kay's footsteps to carry God's love to the unreached peoples in brothels and on street sides. Many girls have come to know God's love through Kay, not just by words, but through actions of true love and compassion. Not every miracle happens in an instant. Kay is a living example that sometimes it takes faithfulness over time, breaking up hard ground, choosing not to judge, but to build a relationship with the prostitutes, the pimps, and the tricks, until they see with their own eyes that God is love, and he is in love with them. In the process, you show up, not with persuasive words, but the demonstration of power through love. You become the living epistle of God's free salvation, and like Kay, bring many to glory.